Hey, y'all. I'm gonna wait for some people to pop on. And I realize now that y'all are like in Arizona, at least some of you are, maybe. So you probably think I sound like a real country hick. But I'm about to tag all the people because I don't like talking to myself. Let me know when you pop on. Let me know if you watch the replay. I'm literally tagging everybody. Too bad, so sad, guys. Um, let me know where you're from and how long you've been with Cincy. I love to talk to my people while I do this. It gives me way more energy and lets me know that you guys are getting value from it. So tonight we're going to be talking about the vision and how to trust the process. And yes, I'm standing up. I feel like I sit so much now being, um, I mean, I guess I started working from home, but also tell me if you guys have a nine to five, like what do you do? What is your job or if, if you do Cincy full time, et cetera. Hey boo. Also tell me where y'all are from. I just like to know that. I was a military kid growing up, so I have friends all over. I am here in North Carolina. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce myself. I guess I probably should have done that right when I got started. My name is Chastity Robinson and I am a superstar director out of Grace Creek, North Carolina. Um, I joined Cincy. I actually had to go back and look at my date. So I joined Cincy in July of 2015 on the $49 join kit with less than $72 in my bank account. Didn't even know if my card was going to go through. Like, and then the email didn't come through and I wasn't really sure if I joined and my sponsor was in Las Vegas at reunion. And then like, you know, your bank account doesn't always update right away. I was like freaking out. Like it was a whole situation. I had no money. I had no nothing. But so I joined in 2015. Um, I joined honestly just to buy for myself, but while my sponsor was in Vegas at reunion, they announced that there was a trip to Disney World. Yeah, the Disney World trip that was five years ago. That was my very first incentive that, um, cause it started in August. I had earned that incentive by October and I fell in love. Like, and I've got full body chills just thinking about it because I was a teacher by trade. Um, I was a single mom at that point and I didn't think that I could do anything well. And since he showed me that I could earn an incentive as a brand new person, literally less than three months in, um, I promoted to director in July of 2016, star director in August of 2017. And then I promoted to superstar director in June of 2019. I recently retired, I guess you could say, from teaching um, since he blessed me uh, with the ability to walk away when COVID happened and I was teaching online from March until the end of the school year with a first grader at home that I was supposed to make sure that he could do his work while teaching a class. It was not a fun time. When August rolled around and they decided to... Um, go virtual. I was like, peace. Bye. That's not going to protect my peace. I can't do it. And so I was able to walk away and not have to stress. And as someone coming from my situation where when I left such an abusive relationship that I'm still paying off debt from, um, because lots of things were put in my name and all that, that's beside the point, but I was able to do that when I didn't even have enough money to live on my own. I had to move in with my mom. My paycheck was my son's daycare bill and gas to and from work. I wouldn't have had food on the table. But since he has completely changed my life. And I say all of that to you because once I caught the vision and once I realized that we have something that people pray for every single night. There is somebody laying in bed praying 
for the opportunity that we have. They just don't know about it yet. Literally, people lay at night and pray for an opportunity for them to make more money and not have to leave their family, for them to build confidence, for them to meet a group of ladies that can empower them and bring them up and have a community. And we have that. And it's really hard when you first join to really catch on to that vision unless you're just digging really deep into the company. I think that it's it's super important for you to catch a vision. I caught a vision from very early on. But it's also really super important for you to be gung-ho, balls to the wall about your why. Sorry, not sorry for saying balls to the wall. But you need to be balls to the wall about your why and about why you do this business. So that when shit hits the fan, when something unexpected happens, when you're going through a depression or going through depression, I have depression and anxiety. It's not something I'm quiet about. I talk about it. When you're having a bad month, when you're having a bad week, when you're having a bad day, that why needs to make you do the things that you don't want to do. Because this is something I've heard from another superstar director. I've heard her say it a couple of times. Never let a temporary feeling affect your five-year dreams. Never let a temporary feeling affect your five-year dreams. Because one day, you're going to be over that depressive state. One day, you're going to pull your big girl panties up and you're going to be ready to work again. But if you've completely stopped because you've lost the vision or because it was hard or because you went through a dip, there's not going to be anything to pick up. So you have to have such a deep-rooted why and a deep-rooted vision for your life that you're going to make yourself do, even if it's just three things for your personal business that day. Because everybody, everybody that's on this right now, you're going through something that nobody knows about. I'm going through things that nobody knows about. And I think about this a lot. Like, you can be standing next to somebody who's having the absolute worst day of their life. There were people that stood next to me in the grocery store line the day after I found out that my husband was having an affair. They had no idea what I was going through. No idea. Just like we don't have any idea about what you're going through. So, I am a firm believer in having that. And I want you to write it down. What is going to make you get out of bed when you don't feel like you can live? What is going to make you go work your business when all you want to do is sleep because you're exhausted? What is that going to be? And... Something else that I'm really, really big on is putting it in your face. If there are sayings that you say, if there are, um, if you have a vision board and goals and things that you want, they need to be in your face. And that's one thing that I've learned a lot through this business is that a lot of people will do their vision board and talk about their 2021 goals and then they never look back at it. Or they'll set their monthly goals and they didn't write them down. They commented on them in a Facebook group. And then they have no idea what their goal even was. How, can you know, how do you know if you are achieving what you've set out for if you don't even remember what you said you wanted to do in 2021? I've been guilty of it. But no, no, girlfriend. Not anymore. That's why that sign right there says Live, live Your Best Life. That is why that sign right there says protect your peace. That is why that over there says you're like really pretty. I need to say those things to myself, right? This right here is something I leave right here in front of my desk because I think it is so important. And I don't even know where I heard it, but now this is how I live every day. If God answered every one of your prayers, would it change anybody's life but your own? If God answered every one of your prayers, would it change anybody's life but your own? Because here, we are in 
the business of blessing people. And the more that you help bless, the more God is going to bless you. So not only do I have those things over there, I also have, I don't know if you can see it. I have a little board over there. And it also has like quotes and my goals. So if you have a paycheck goal, print it out. Print it out. It needs to be everywhere. Put it on post-its in your bathroom, in your car. Put it everywhere. It needs to be in front of your face so that when you want to curl up in the bed and go to sleep and not work, you're reminding yourself of the goals that you set. Because I'm here to tell you, sis, nobody can change your life but you. Nobody. Nobody has to wake up and do what you do. Only you do. So you get to decide if that's going to be a fulfilled life or if that's going to be a life where you're always looking back and asking why or wondering what if or if you let a temporary feeling affect your five-year dreams and your business has died or you feel like you're going to dip and you're never going to come out of it. It is so much easier to continue to push with the small little things even when you don't want to. Something else um, is if you are looking, I wrote this down earlier, you will find excuses or you are going to find reasons, period. Everybody that has something going on in their life, you're either going to use it as an excuse to not work or you're going to use it as a reason to fucking slay the day. Sorry for cursing. But you're going to either find an excuse or you're going to find a reason. And this is what I always tell my people. It's okay to have a minute. It is okay. It's okay to not be okay. It's just not okay to stay there. And there are people who have less potential than you that are going to go out and chase their dreams and reach that goal because they used it as a reason and not an excuse. You can use it as an excuse if you want to, but I'm going to use it as a reason. So I'm going to have my minute. I'm going to feel bad for myself. I'm going to bitch about it. I'm going to cry about it. I'm going to yell about it. Then I'm going to pull my big girl panties on, whatever I do, and I'm going to pick my kid up. That's the difference, guys. When something's going on in your life, don't put that kit down. Pick your kit up. Come hell or high water, you can count on this business with doing the work. You can't count on somebody else. You can't count on your job at the gas station or your job at the mall. They could close tomorrow. But what you can do is you have control of what you do. And a lot of times there are people that have things that go on in their life. Everybody does. And they will put their kit down and stop working instead of picking it up and getting mad. The best I ever worked in my business was when I was mad. Like not mad at other people, but I used, I mean, things that happened to me, I could have used all of those as an excuse to go be a drug addict like him, to go do nothing with my life. Or I could use it as a reason to provide every single thing that I ever dreamed of for myself. Everything that anybody ever told me that I wouldn't, do, wouldn't be or I wouldn't do, I've done it twice and I'm going to take pictures. Because I get to control that. Nobody else does. And I tell my people that all the time. Have your minute, but pick your kid up. Don't put it down. Because in three months... When you are over being sad, you're going to look back and be like, well, where are my customers? Why can't I recruit anybody? Why does my paycheck suck? Oh, shit, I'm about to lose my downline. Like, no. I'm not saying you need to hustle until, until you die. I'm, I'm a firm believer in taking your minute. But no matter what, if I'm, especially if I'm having a really hard day or I'm having a hard season... Or like when I was working full-time teaching and I had two young kids and a police officer husband and had no time to work my business, come hell or high water, I did three things a day. 
three income producing things a day. That may have only been following up with 15 people while I was peeing on my lunch and I didn't even have a lunch break. That may have been dropping off orders on a Tuesday after work when I really didn't want to. But doing the things that matter, even when you don't feel like it, that's what's going to make the difference. That's what's going to make the difference. But you don't need to work yourself into the ground trying to do and be what everybody else is. If you're doing something and it's not an income producing activity and it doesn't bring you joy and you're just feeling like bogged down and like you can't just push past it, stop doing it. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. Stay in your lane. Put your head down and get to work and do the things that you know are going to move the needle in your business. Making a sample isn't going to move your business. Making a sample itself is not income producing. It's only income producing when you make it, when you send it out, when you follow up, and when you're building relationships and eventually make a sale. Only do income producing things. So if all you have time for is a couple, is three things, come hell or high water, do those three things. All the rest of the stuff can wait. Three little tasks can absolutely, fundamentally, change your business. You don't have to do a lot, but you do have to be consistent. Nothing matters unless you're consistent. Nothing. Losing weight, drinking water, going to work, building your business, building relationships, posting on social media. If you aren't consistent, it doesn't matter, period. Consistency is going to bring confidence. And when you're confident, you feel better. When you feel better, you look better. When you look better, you work better. Like all of those little things can build up. And something that I think a lot of Scentsy leaders don't really talk about is the dip. Raise your hand if you've ever felt like you, or raise your hand. God, that's a teacher in me. Talk to me in the chat if you've ever felt like you've went through a dip in your business. Like you can't, um, find new customers or you can't recruit or you just feel like your business is like on a high and then it just went really like down. For instance, I think a lot of um, consultants go through a dip when like right after their first 70 days, if they were a rock star, I think a lot of people go through a dip um, right after like a couple months after they promote direct to director. Everybody goes through the dip. Everybody. And anybody that hasn't, or anybody that's telling you that they never have went through a dip, they're a liar. Everybody has. The dip and coming out on side of it, on the other side of it, that's where the superstar directors lie. That's where the directors lie. The people who push through the dip because they see that long-term vision. Because they have a why that's going to make them jump out of bed in the morning. Because they know that they were made to do more than to just pay bills and die. Because they know that they're on a mission to do more. But going through the dip only happens when you wake up and do the things that you don't want to do. That's it. And when you're going through the dip, I highly encourage you to reach out to your sponsor, to your director. You may be going through a dip, but to your director or your sponsor, you may still be slaying it. I have a girl right now on my team, bomb ass director. Over 3,000 PRB has recruited five people this month. She says she's in a dip. I'm not going to invalidate those feelings. I'm not going to invalidate those, but hell yes, I'm going to build belief in her. Hell yes, I'm going to tell her that she's doing a good job. Because it doesn't matter what I feel like she's doing. If she feels like she's in a dip, we need to talk about it. We need to chat through it. We need to talk about what we can do to, to change that feeling. Because that's one of the hardest things you'll do is push through the dip. And... When you tell somebody 
don't tell the negative Nancys, the pissed off Patties, and the I just want to be hateful motherfuckers. I mean, sorry, not sorry. But if you have somebody in your life who's negative like that, stay the fuck away from them. Because they are never going to bring anything positive to your life. You become like the five people that you talk to and spend the most time around. And if all you are around are negative people, like the people that hang out on all these other Scentsy pages that just bitch and moan, then that's what you're going to do. But if you hang out with the women that are going to let you have your minute, let you yell it out, let you say everything you need to say, and then ask you if you're done. Are you done? And if you're not done, fine, but you, you got to get over it at some point and find a solution. You have to be solution driven. There is always a, a problem that's going to happen, but there's also a solution. And if you don't have an accountability partner, or you don't have a good relationship with your sponsor or whatever, don't make that excuse. Please don't. Because ain't nobody got time for it. Because there are so many people who join this business who randomly found a consultant on a website and have, has never had a training from anybody. But you know what? Those that want it, go out and do it on their own. They go and figure it out. So, don't make that excuse. However, I will highly suggest you align yourself with people who are doing the things that you want to do. Meaning, working their business effectively, having a happy life, earning incentives. Like, you want to watch what the successful people do and do that but do it your way because nobody wants a copycat. Nobody wants somebody just doing exactly what they do. But my goal is to always be the hardest working in the room, but the dumbest. I never want to be the smartest person in a room. I don't. And if I ever get to the day where I feel like I'm the smartest person in the room, my husband's going to take me out. That's just a given. But nobody's going to outwork me. But you have to learn from people who have been, who have been where you want to be. And you're going to find your people. There's probably people you've listened to um, training-wise that you don't vibe with. Guys, that's okay. You don't have to vibe with everybody. You may not vibe with me. That's fine. But talk to your sponsor, talk to your director. They can help you find someone to follow or to watch their videos or watch their training that you vibe with. I mean, that's human nature. Not everybody's going to vibe with everybody else, but it is our job as a leader and as a hope dealer and a blessing giver to align them with people who can help them grow. So if you can commit to always being the hardest worker in the room, but never being the smartest, you're going to go places. And when I say like watch people, watch the successful people or align yourself with them, that doesn't mean you have to go like stalk them and like be all up in their inbox. Someone can mentor you and you can learn from them by watching their trainings on YouTube. The people, Christina Sainbrook, Katie Farner, um, uh, uh, Jen Audette, um, so many other, Jennifer Anderson. When I first joined, those are the people, I have a great sponsor, but I needed to learn. I was hungry. They mentored me. They were my girl crushes. I listened to their YouTubes and I learned so much from them. And they mentored me, and I had no idea, or they had no idea. Literal, like, talk to um, Jennifer Anderson, and I'm, like, shaking 
because it's like since he's celebrity, I look up to her so much. Christina Sandbrook and I talked in Punta Cana. I'm pretty sure she probably doesn't even remember it, but it meant so much because those people were putting things out for people that were hungry like me that maybe needed more training or needed it said a different way. Because let's be honest, Susan can say something to you and she's probably said some of the exact same things I've said tonight, but it's going to hit different when it's coming from somebody else. You know that, right? When your mama tells you something, you're like, whatever. But then your aunt or your best friend tells you and you're like, well, damn, right? So stay, stay learning. And if you're going through the dip or you're feeling like you want to give up or you're feeling like you don't know what to do, you don't have to do this alone, but no one can work your business for you. So be very self-reflective and ask yourself, if you're saying, number one, my kids and my family, we're not allowed to say I can't. That word is like biggest, we say cuss words around here, but we don't say I can't. Um, but if you're saying I can't book parties, which we don't say, we ain't gonna say that, but I have to ask myself, okay, well, what am I doing? Once I can pinpoint what I'm doing, well, that's not working, Chastity. Fucking figure it out. Do something different. You have to learn. You have to evolve. You have to do things that make you uncomfortable to continue to grow. Nothing grows from comfort zones. And if you are comfortable right now, you are coasting. And something I want to talk about really quick, and I'm going to be done. So, August of 2017, I promoted to star director. I got, uh, well, I guess I had, my, yeah, I had my, I had my daughter in 2, 16, 18 is her birthday. Okay. 2018, from the time that I had her until about December, I was in the worst, one of the worst places in my life. Not the worst because that was before, but I had postpartum depression like low. I was not happy with my body, with my job, um, adjusting from one kid to two. It's a lot. My husband was working um, in the gang unit and he was working 50, 60 hours a week. So he wasn't home. I'm driving all over town, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I made a lot of excuses and I felt like shit and I didn't put my business down but I know that I wasn't giving it everything that I could. And I wasn't making a plan to get out of it. And so in, let's see. So August of 2017, I promoted to star director. The fall of 2018, I was pretty much expecting to promote to superstar director because pretty much I joined in 15, 16, and 17, I promoted, right? Director, starter, or joined director, star director. So I was just, no, I just knew I was going to promote to starter, super star director in 2018. It didn't happen in that fall. And I was not happy. I felt embarrassed. I felt like I let people down, even though I didn't. Nobody else knew that that was like really what I, what I had going on. But when it didn't happen, what I had to do was a whole fuck ton of self-reflection. Chastity wasn't ready to promote to Superstar Director. I wasn't doing the things that I needed to do. My personal business was rocking for the most part. But leadership-wise, I was not doing what I needed to do for my people to deserve promoting to the next level. Something I heard Jason Harwood say at my first or my star director summit approach was focus on being an extraordinary star director and superstar director will come. Focus on being the best at whatever title you are. So focus on being the best lead consultant that you can be to yourself and to your team and the promotion will come. I didn't deserve it, and it wasn't my time. God says when it's time. But after that fall, January came, I put my head down, and I got to work, y'all. And I went to, um, 
So from January to April, I had kind of self-reflected. I heard Jason say that in um, either late March or early April. He said, focus on being a extraordinary star director and superstar director will come. When I went home, I, I, must, I think it was beginning of April, I put my head down, y'all, and I worked, and I worked, and I did it for the people, not for me. I switched my mindset. It wasn't about me. It was about blessing other people and helping them reach their goals. So I came home from Star Director Summit Approach in April of... Uh, April of 2019. Three months later, I promoted to Superstar Director. Because I put in the work. Because I was focusing on other people. Because I didn't make it about me. And I say all of that to say about being in that dip in 2018. Because what if I had completely quit my business? What if I said life is too hard and I just don't want to do this anymore? What if? I mean, what if? I wouldn't have been able to have the option to walk away from teaching this past August. I wouldn't have had the option. I would have spent this last year miserable doing a, I love teaching. I know God put me on this earth to teach, but I walked away with a clear heart because I walked away when I fundamentally disagreed with the way that things were being done, education wise, online wise, the things that I was being asked to do while also making sure my son got the education that he needed. I could not continue to put a classroom of 25 kids that aren't mine above my two at home. But if I hadn't done the hard things and stayed up late to mail out my samples and worked on the weekends while I was teaching and didn't have time or involved my family when I could or trained my team on the way to work or on the way home from work or did coaching calls when I was so tired and didn't want to give anything to anybody, but I knew that God was going to bless me if I continued to do his work. And if I had let those temporary feelings get to me, I wouldn't have what I have now. And I know that the vision that I had before 2018, I never used to post my goals like that. I never used to have words like this. I was one of those kids like, I don't know if you, Zanga. It was like a long time ago where I was always one of those kids that like liked quotes. Like I, I will resonate with a quote. I love it. That's just me. But I never really posted them anywhere. They were just like stuck in my Pinterest or in my head or a screenshot or whatever. I never really posted them like that. And now you will literally find post-its everywhere. I find them everywhere. Because when I see something or when I hear something, I'm like, bam. Oh, this is another one I wrote down. This is actually another one. I'm like, I need that because you never know when a moment's going to hit. Our brains, they're mean. They're mean bitches. Your mind is your most powerful business tool. Jennifer Anderson said that. Your mind is your most powerful business tool. Okay? Last three things I'm going to say. If anybody has any questions, please ask. I am an open book. I hope this was helpful for y'all. But I am hoping and praying that I am going to see some like goals, some visions, some quotes, whatever it is. And nobody can tell you what's too little or too small. Your goal may not be to retire your husband. Your goal may not be to have $30,000 a month paychecks. But they can be. You can make 50, 60, 70, $80,000 a month paychecks. It's possible. Your only limit is you. Okay, if you are too, so I know that sometimes when people start these businesses and I don't know about you, but I got a lot of haters. I got a lot of people who said I would never make it, who laughed at me for leaving teaching, who did all the things. Chastity is awkward, Annie. I am awkward all day long. I don't try to be. It's just who I am, but I've learned to embrace it. You've got to learn to embrace 
whoever you are. But if you are too embarrassed to try, whatever it is, because you're probably thinking of something in your head, what's outside of your comfort zone that you're embarrassed to try? Is it going live? Is it asking somebody that you know would rock this business to join? Is it whatever it is, whatever you are too embarrassed to try, if you are too embarrassed to try, you are too afraid to be successful. Because the outcome, if you're too afraid to try, it's the same thing as staying stagnant. If you don't try, you're in the exact same place. If you do try and you fail, you failed into learning what you can do better. But if you're too scared and too embarrassed to even put yourself out there, then how in the hell can you be successful? How in the hell can you reach your goals if you're not even going to try because you're embarrassed about what Joe Blow down the street is going to say? They don't pay your bills. They don't feed your family. So who gives a damn? People laugh at me all the time. Well, Chastity's sitting at home while y'all are doing virtual learning. Not I. Okay? If you're too embarrassed to try, you are too afraid to be successful. Last thing I'm going to leave you with. Remember who the fuck you are. Remember who you are. I'm going to be really honest with you. I didn't know who I was when I joined Sensi. I was lost. I had no self-confidence. I felt less than. I am an introvert. I... I just like would shudder with the lack of self-confidence that I had back then. I don't like to be the center of attention. I don't like people to like look at me like when you're opening birthday presents, stop looking at me. Like I don't know what to do with my hands. Why are you looking at me? I don't like that. So the idea of even going live or talking about my business or reaching out to people scared the shit out of me. But I learned who the hell I am by doing this business. I didn't know who I was. And if you're in that boat because you don't know who you are or you question who it is, I'm going to challenge you to do some inner work and really decide who you are and what you stand for and once you decide that, and once you know what you stand for, and you know, without a shadow of a doubt, like for me, I know that my mission is to spread light, and kindness is always going to prevail. And I know that my mission, even though I am with Sensi, Sensi is a vessel for me to also help other people. And I know that I am awkward, that I cuss, that I drink beer, that I'm loud with people I do like, that I have an ugly laugh, that I'm obsessed with true crime, that I'm ratchet and I know it. And if somebody is thinking it, I'll probably say it. I have resting bitch face. My friends have to tell me to fix my face all the time. Most people think that I'm super mean because I walk around looking like this, but it's just my face. I don't know what to tell you. And I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks anymore. I don't, but I haven't always been that way. I got that way through this business, through developing myself. This business, you get paid to personally develop yourself. You should be learning something new every day. And I can guarantee you that if I had not joined this business and I was out doing something, I wouldn't have prevailed over everything that I did in this way. Hell yeah, I still would have gotten over it. But it may have taken me five more years to figure out who I am. But now, nobody gets to talk to me like I'm a piece of shit. Nobody gets to tell me what to do. Because I'm the boss. And I know it. And when you can become so convicted and so confident in your business and in yourself and what you stand for... That's just going to make your vision so, like, have your blinders on. 
ask yourself what your core values are. What do you stand for? When you think of Sensi, you know what those core values are. Those three core values are at the heart of everything. So ask yourself that about you. What are you going to stand for? You teach people how to treat you. I'm on a whole nother thing right now, but your vision can get you everywhere that you want to be. There was some, there was another quote I had over here. When you wake up every day or every night, like before I go to bed, I write down what I'm going to do the next day, like sort of plan my day out. And this quote says, make decisions from the perspective of who you want to become. So make decisions from the perspective of who you want to become. So if you want to be a boss ass bitch and be a director, then act like a director. Do the things that they do. Make the decision to do that and make sure you share that with other people. Um, so my core values, my team name is Shine Your Light and I named it that years ago because I don't, God just convicted me to name it that because one thing when I was coming out of everything that I went through was nobody's going to dim my light. I'm going to spread light no matter where I go. I don't want people to look at me when I walk into a room, but I do want my aura or my presence to be positive and uplifting and light. Um, I do everything from a place of blessing other people. Like if God answered every single one of your prayers, would it change anybody's life but your own? Um, I don't really know what word to say for that. Um, and to be a hope dealer. To be a hope dealer because I want people to continue to have that hope for their life that I didn't have when I was in a bad place. Because like I said before, our mind is our most powerful business tool. And if your mind is putting you in a bad place, you don't have any hope or your hope is looking or your future is looking very dim. And you and everybody needs somebody in their life that's gonna tell them a $10,000 a month paycheck, that's not a big enough goal. It's not a big enough goal. Go bigger. Or when someone says, and I mean, if that's not, if you don't want to make that kind of money, that's fine. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like if somebody that's aligned with you that knows you want big things for your life and you say, I want a $10,000 paycheck, you need somebody that's going to push you. And I want to make sure that I can be that for people because I needed somebody to build belief in me like I can't even imagine. And if you follow me on any, any social media platforms, you'll see that I talk, I've talk. i been talking a lot about my abusive relationship. And I've gotten a lot of flack from that here lately about people are like, well, why are you talking about that? You've been married for five years. Bitch, I'm talking about it because it's my story and I get to say what I want. But the real reason, see, that's the ratchet coming out. Sorry. The real reason why I share and why I talk about it is because I'm trying to be what I needed. When I was going through all of that, nobody was talking about it. Nobody was sharing it. Nobody was, everything was quiet. And me, I live in a small town. Well, I live in a town that everybody grew up together. So I was 27 years old, married, getting a divorce. My husband got another girl pregnant. I was by myself. I went back and forth with the abusive relationship because I wasn't educated on what those things were and that it wasn't normal and that the feelings that I were that I was feeling weren't normal to like normal people but they were normal for a toxic relationship so that's why I am the way that I am when it comes to that because I want to give hope to somebody and I want to be the person that needed to hear that because I needed it so desperately and there was no one doing it. And I don't do it for the clout. I don't do it for me. I do it because I know that somebody needs to hear it and God puts it on my heart 
And God didn't put me through all of that to stay quiet. God gave me this story. He's not, God's not going to give you troubled waters and a storm and all of that for nothing. My life is beautiful now. My life was hell. My life was hell back then. I couldn't imagine life on the other side. I couldn't imagine life without Cincy. And Cincy has been such an integral part of me getting over that toxic relationship and me getting a divorce and me having the money to have an attorney was because of Cincy. And every bit of that just falls all into my story. And that's why. Sorry, that was a whole nother tangent. But you have a story to tell. You have a why. And you've got to keep the vision. Haters are going to hate, man. Haters are always going to be there. But they don't feed your family. They don't pay your bills. Nobody has to wake up and do your life but you. And so you can go make it your best life. All right? I hope this is helpful for y'all. I love y'all so much. Um, thank y'all for listening to me rant. Bye!